Calculating a confidence interval is a standard statistical technique used to show the accuracy and reliability of a particular survey finding. Here are 10 key points you need to consider. Almost all research is carried out using a sample rather than the entire population. As such, the figures obtained from the research will not exactly match the true population statistics, the results we would have got had we sampled everybody. A confidence interval is a range of values based on our sample figures in which we are confident the true value lies. There are several elements involved in the calculation of a confidence interval. These are the confidence level and associated z-score, the standard error and the finite population correction factor. The confidence level is the probability that the true population statistic lies somewhere within the confidence interval. The standard confidence level is 95%, which means if the research were repeated 100 times, the true population statistic would fall within the confidence interval in 95 of those 100 samples. If we would like to know where the true population statistic will fall 95% of the time, we need an interval that contains 95% of all the possible values that it could take. This is achieved by converting our scores into z-scores. This conversion gives us values that have a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. For this type of distribution, we already know that 95% of the data will lie between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. As such, we use this figure in the calculation of the confidence interval. The standard error is a measure of the variability in our results. It's found directly from the standard deviation and gives us an indication of how well the data from our sample represents the population. The final population correction factor is used when the size of the population is known and the sample size is at least 5% of this. This factor reduces the size of the confidence interval by taking into account how big the sample is as a fraction of the population. All of these elements are combined simply by multiplying them together. The resulting figure is added to and subtracted from the sample statistic of interest to create an interval centred on that statistic. Taking all of these elements and calculations into account, what we actually end up with is two values, an upper and lower limit, that defines an interval in which we're 95% sure the true population statistic lies. If this interval is relatively small, we can be confident that the sample statistic is a good estimate of the population statistic. If the interval grows, we become less and less confident that the sample findings are actually representative of the population. The main way to decrease the size of a confidence interval is to increase the size of the sample so it's a bigger fraction of the population. Decreasing the confidence level will also make the confidence interval smaller, but we would normally recommend 95% as the lowest confidence level to use. By rearranging the formula, we can use a predetermined confidence interval to work out how big a sample needs to be in order to achieve this desired level of accuracy. As this needs to be done before the research is carried out, the standard error will need to be estimated using pro knowledge of the research questions involved. If you go to the modelling tools section of our website, that's www.rcu.co.uk, you'll find a graphical illustration of a sample size calculator. Even though there are some complex ideas behind the theory of confidence intervals, the practical aspect is relatively straightforward. A confidence interval is a range of values based on our research findings in which we are confident the true value lies. Having a good understanding of confidence intervals will add value to any research project as they can be used to show how robust the findings are and where the true statistics of interest actually lie. If you'd like to discuss confidence intervals or any other research needs you may have, get in touch.
Our contact details are on screen now.